I have an announcement to make. I was wrong about one particular phone that I've reviewed recently. No, no, nothing to do with the Apple iPhone, though my review of the 3GS is coming up in the next show. This has to do more with the Nokia E75. I pronounced it cluttered from interface to keys to screen, leaving you all with a pronounced don't buy subtext. However, I was wrong to write it off completely. I was right and it's still a, a cluttered and very confusing smartphone for a newcomer to pick up and be productive with, but I was wrong in that there's a significant niche for the E75 and um, I'm right in the middle of it. You see, anyone who's already familiar with S60 who knows their way around the menus, the settings, the apps, they'll love the E75. It packs an incredible amount of multimedia and office functions, including one of the best phone QWERTY keyboards I've seen into such a tiny and thin form factor. I've been using one as my main smartphone for the last week and the E75 does keep on surprising me. So for S60 power users I was wrong, do buy it. Just don't give this baby to a smartphone novice, okay? Now this is something rather special, the Nokia N86 8 megapixels, but You've got to look past the slightly glitchy early firmware, past the fact that it's a traditional non-touch dual slider running S60 3rd edition, past the now rather quaintly small quarter VGA screen. Oh yes, and past the launch price. See, past those and you've got yourself possibly the best all-round camera phone in the world. Uh, at 8 megapixels it's got some competition of course and you won't find any gimmicks here, e.g. there's no smile detection. What you do get is Nokia's rock-solid hardware. You get Carl Zeiss's rather good optics, in this case wide angle, a camera with variable aperture so that it can handle extremes of light and dark conditions better, a sensor that's much more sensitive than that one, for example, the already classic Nokia N95 that I'm shooting this show on. Uh, you also get software that makes high dynamic range photos possible, producing photos like these. Uh, in the awkward middle ground between bright sun and darkness, the N86 shines. Cloudy day, shooting at dusk, in an office, no problem. Talking of night, there's dual LED flash rather than xenon, as on the N82, but the extra sensitivity of the sensor makes up much of the difference. With the dual LED flash, night photos are better than you've ever seen for non-xenon camera phones, and even night videos are acceptable. Talking of video, you'll have heard me complain many times about Nokia's recent trend in the N79, N85, N96 and N97 of using smaller cameras that have no preset focus and video mode. So all your close-up videos of family and friends come out rather blurry. But the rot stops here. This little segment is being shot on the N86 uh, with the device having an N95 class mechanical lens system that allows a preset focus of a few meters and produces far better results for most people most of the time, uh, again aided in dodgy light conditions by that super sensor. So we've got a tip top camera and camcorder phone. What else stands out on the N86? Well, it's perhaps the ultimate evolution of the dual slide form factor introduced with the original N95. Uh, unlike other recent dual sliders from Nokia, this returns to the discrete keypad keys as on the N95, thankfully. Ergonomically, the N86 is just about perfect, aided by a sumptuous choice of build materials with, uh, with metal outer ring framing a tempered glass fascia. The screen is somewhat controversial. It's OLED, making it utterly gorgeous indoors, but rather hard to see when the sun's blazing behind you, like, uh, you know, when taking a photo. Something the N86 is born to do. I'd much rather have seen a standard transflective screen here, Nokia, as on the N95. There's a key lock toggle here on the left side and works well. And there's also a 3.5 millimeter audio and TV out jack. Stereo speakers flank the right hand side, but they're much quieter than, than on the N95 and that's a disappointment. Inside there's eight gigabytes of flash memory plus micro SD expansion with S60 third edition feature pack two plus a number of tweaks that really speed things along, such as reducing the number of silly access point prompts. In truth, S60 in its non-touch guise is now very mature with all the usual PIM and multimedia apps. Uh, there's GPS of course and Nokia Maps comes with six months free car navigation before you even have to start thinking about paying extra. That's really nice. Look, the N86 is fabulously made. It's reassuringly solid with just about the best quality phone camera in the world. And if photos and videos are your thing, then go for the N86, even with the OLED in sunlight caveat after all. If you're taking arty photos with this thing, you're unlikely to be shooting in cliched sun conditions anyway. 
and you've got the full catalogue of S60 applications to draw on to power you through life. Just don't expect iPhone-like gaming or iPhone-like ease of use. At the end of the day, this is simply an upgraded Nokia N95 Classic. And you know what? As an N95 fan, this is being shot on the N95. There's nothing whatsoever wrong with that. This is the Nokia N86. So I'm here with Lee Williams from the Symbian Foundation. What's your actual title and role here? Lee? Yeah, Executive Director. Um, nobody really calls me that. Ed's okay. You can call me Ed. Ed. Uh, executive <laughs> Director. But uh, okay. I, I run the Symbian Foundation on a day-to-day -day basis. Well, part of the reason we use Open, and where I would articulate there are benefits, is that Open is about more than just being transparent. It's about more than throwing some code over the wall. It's about letting people in to influence your direction and where you're going. So the, the reason we use Open and one of the real benefits of it is you get the benefit of others coming in and help you formulate your roadmap, uh, helping you take your UI in new directions in terms of usability and otherwise, and then you know helping you implement an architecture um, that, is, that is more robust, sound, and really has a life to it that you wouldn't get otherwise. So it's, it's the classic example of when openness works, it's about having more heads on a problem, more subject matter expertise on a problem than you would get otherwise within one company or one closed implementation. Symbian has legs as a technology base, um, very long legs, full support for LTE, um, you can look no further than the implementation of some of the freeway technologies that you've seen or, or heard about as an yeah. example of how LTE will really plug in. When you add in the capabilities of SMP support, um, you look at the strong object and messaging model that exists in Symbian today, you see a, a natural way to, to take advantage of those things and get the legs we're talking about. Well, broader technology support. Uh, eight years of maturity, um, really advanced technology at many levels instead of one or two, um, and then just a, a plethora of support for open and de facto industry standards. No, and it shouldn't be to anybody involved. If you look at the breadth of the Nokia product portfolio and what it requires in terms of the number and types of software systems um, to keep that portfolio expanding and growing, uh, at the rate that it's known for, something like MIMO makes perfect sense for, for certain products. Well, I think when you look at the total size of the smartphone market and the types of products that are relevant for consumers um, in, that, in that marketplace, um, I speculate that no more than 30% of that overall market will actually end up um, being occupied by touchscreen products and display-only products. Um, so I think you, you have uh, at least 70% of a marketplace out there that will always be well represented um, by products of a different form factor where people really like their query, really like their hard inputs, and really like the focus that shows up in a UI so that you can one-hand it and use it in many different aspects of your life. <laughs> Well, one of the things when you're in the Nokia business, it's a very large uh, conglomerate, right? Um, you, you literally have, have thousands of individuals to deal with on a daily basis. So you have to embrace processes and methodology at a level that's quite unique just to get anything done day over day. And one of the differences in what we're doing today um, is that, is that uh, we ditch the process and method in a lot of ways. We can be much more creative. Um, I, I can walk outside uh, my offices and, and, and or sit in my office and pull six people into a room. We can whiteboard something and go make it happen. Just hop on the phones, hop on the mail, uh, hop down on the systems and make it happen. So it's very different than Nokia. I would say we've, we've ditched that. Okay. Other than that, let, let me just add, it, you know, we're having a lot of fun. People who are used to working in large companies where you can't do or say certain things, we're just doing it differently. When we talk about, somebody said the other day, I want to write a memo to do the following, and maybe we should have a newsletter. And it's like, no, 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 throw up a Twitter feed, see if anybody follows you, and, and go from there. We can do some things like that that are a bit unique when compared to, again, working at Nokia when I was there. Yeah, I think it's safe to say a general reaction isn't a consistent one, is, well, you're doing something different and new. Um, I would say a second, you know, so we've accomplished that goal. That is part of what we were trying to communicate with the new branding approach. I would say uh, then you start to divide opinion. 
Um, <laughs> you suddenly get to people who go, oh, wait and see, this looks like something my four-year-old could draw. Um, and so they wait to see what they're going to hear next of, of, of substance coming from you, right? Um, but then the other reaction is, wow, this, this really does have this imagery has the, and the way you're approaching your branding has the elements of everything you're trying to get across as a promise uh, to the industry, to the marketplace, to developers. Yeah, I use an i8910, so the Samsung product. Okay. I also carry a 97. I'm a <laughs> bit of a diseased individual and I have four SIMs. Um, so I also have a prototype I can't show you today and a uh, and an E75 that I use quite a bit. But I'm really liking the, uh, the 8910 on my commute actually because I have Mobler on it, I have Gravity on it, I can sit there and browse mail while I'm doing all of this. And, uh, and the screen is beautiful. That having this nice big OLED screen is, is really yeah. nice. It would have been so disappointing if you'd pulled out a Nokia 3650 at that point. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks, Lee. Yes, you're welcome. So I'm here with Anatoly Papas, who is community matchmaker at Symbian, believe it or not. Um, Symbian Foundation has been growing hugely. You started on January the 1st? That's right. So Lee Williams moved into the building January 1st. We're now at about 76 employees. We'll double by October time. So by our next uh, annual trade show, which is in October, we'll be at about 140. And by the end of the year, we'll reach 160. Thank you.